make a comment if I if I can. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Well, before anybody starts. Oh no. Tim has questions. Seriously, good question. Just to say that uh, Luke and Alex um, actually helped us a lot on this experiment. Um, we put them to all kinds of, of work. Um, they spent a lot of time in the dark room doing film development for us. Luke spent a lot of time helping Ben with setting up Pfizer. Um, and and they, they also they built a lot of the wire loads for us. So, so they, they didn't have an easy time of this. And, and the, uh, the experiment with the x-ray films and the little canisters was kind of put together at the last minute, but it's Alex's uh, analysis there has shown that really we're dealing with a, a situation that's far more complex than we initially anticipated, um, since we never started off knowing what the spectrum of, of photons coming out of these uh, reactions would be. Uh, now we have a, a better idea, and certainly these results give us uh, the path to redesign those experiments and, and start looking harder at, at what the, uh, the issues are that tend to determine the, the isotropy or, or otherwise of the x-ray thing. So, so we just like to express our gratitude to, uh, to, to Alex and Luke for spending all this time here and, and charging into this machine gun nest that we put in the middle of an ice rink for them to, uh, to run at. Um, so, uh, so, Alex, can I ask a question? Sure, Tim. Could you could you pop back to the to the first slide where you showed um, a lot of pictures of the films? Um, you had you had the, the three by four matrix of the scanned films. That one. Yep. So, um, number two on shot thirty four seventy three. Uh, this one. The the holes are dark. That one still showed it after I did the analysis. So 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 it has the same absorption characteristics for the three lead layers. Yes. But everyone else shows a light spot in the middle of the holes, and that shows dark. No, even that dark circle after I did the grayscale analysis on it still had that same scatter pattern on it. It was, yeah, so it was a lot lighter, and I think that, um, I think that, because if you notice on the, uh, the rest of them, uh, I think the, the lead itself might have been a little bit off, because the circle on that one is a little bit off on all of them. So I think it might have just been the way that the lead was facing on that film. I think okay. it might have just been a distortion from the lead. But it still showed it, it was just off to the side, because if you look on, um, This this actually shows it. It's right here, but that's the um, that's the seven six. But if you notice, the scattering is up in this corner. So I think right. it might have been a distortion on the light. Okay, Great. that's 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 a possibility. Um, another one might be that for some reason that particular canister, almost everything that came in was already below ten keV. That may have been also, um, which actually would have exposed the films darker through the holes. And would have explained why the scintillators. Yeah, because the scintillators were. were interested yeah, they were a lot lighter. Of exposure, them. but but um, since other other exposures from the same shot um, actually show the opposite behavior, we 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 must have had a special a special direction, or as you say, uh, uh, um, an odd configuration of the of the films in the can of the of the lead sheets. Yeah, and remember this one was four, so this one was over top though. Right. So and that one was acting funny a lot too. So. We we one of the reasons we started this is that is that we couldn't actually explain the neutron production and isotropy, um, which we think is probably connected also with these higher energy um, gamma rays. Um, so. Hey Luke, stand up too. <laughs> it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't clear to me as to what the, the primary motivation for this experiment was. Was it to to provide additional information on shock diagnostic or was it 
to provide information for safety considerations? The, what motivated you to? The primary motivation was actually to just figure out the profile of the x-ray, to figure out whether or not the, the energy intensities were the same, whether or not it was actually coming out homogeneous or not. It was essentially what it was. Um, it turned into something more because we learned very quickly that it was not. Just off these initial films, we realized that there wasn't really a particular direction that it was either favoring and it wasn't coming out the same in all directions. So there wasn't really, after that we kind of dug into it a little bit more. Are, are you actually using the x-rays for any? any no, they're, they're byproducts of the shot. Yeah, so uh, why would you care about they come out as long as you're not standing in, in, in uh, the way of it? Like Tim was just alluding to, it kind of matters, it doesn't matter necessarily for this shot, but being that they do a lot of uh, DE reactions and stuff like that inside of there, it could matter for neutron production or the other shots. I, 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 could you just review what the process is of it, what's involved in this? Uh, you, have a, you have a high current, then you have a shock wave. Is, is there some other material besides the palladium? For or just the, the wires? For the is that X pinch itself? Or yeah. Right? yeah. Oh. So um, Ben's experiment was actually, we're using the, the X pinch, I don't know how familiar you are. Uh, Zero. Okay, so um, <laughs> so the Marks Bank um, it charges up. Um, yeah, it uh, charges up 36 capacitors up to about 100. Well, about 85 to 100 kV, and then uh, it switches from parallel to series, dumps everything into the GD70 like all the same time, and then that releases all in the same time into the uh, zebra. And then uh, the zebra, depending on the configuration, is either in a Z pinch configuration, which essentially just crushes the cylinder um, and creates a fusion. It was originally designed for a fusion device. So it crushes the cylinder down and creates a magnetic field. Um, or it, the Z pinch and X pinch create a magnetic field. The X pinch fires an electron beam up because uh, we've got a circulating magnetic field in the current going up. Uh -huh. So we're using that, um, the current going up to fire an electron beam up into a copper plate, and then Ben's using that uh, section of the experiment uh, to fire that electron beam into the copper plate, measure a shock wave coming off of it, like a gas gun. So, so the the wire are the wires in air or vacuum? They're in vacuum. Oh, okay. The wires the wires are just the current method to get it's uh, the just the current transport in between the cathode and the anode. But the shock wave is from the exploding wires. The, well, the wires, because there's so much current, there's a million amps going through it, so the wires blink in the plasma, and then the plasma, and then the, the rest of the discharge actually gets thrown up into the copper plate as plasma and just the electron, the electron beam. Okay, so you said there's two configurations, one with a magnetic field. Well, they, they both have magnetic field, it's just the direction of one magnetic field. One with a circular field. magnetic field. Yeah, the, the Z pinch is, uh, it has parallel wires, so it, it just contracts itself, oh, and then the X pinch is uh, an actual. It's a twisted wire configuration. So the magnetic so field is produced by the wire. Yeah, it's been wire. produced by the wire. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any major reason why you're using film as opposed to some sort of digital medium? They had some concerns that uh, because it's such a large current, and with how much energy is actually coming out of it, there's a very large EMP that comes out of it. So they had some concerns that. Uh, some of the electronic sensors that they have will get disrupted by the EMP. Is it going to be harder to obtain this film because... No, this film is actually pretty... It, Kodak went out of business. It's made by Kodak, right? Kodak went out of business, but uh, they still produce this film readily. Right um, we were actually thinking about changing anyway to like an RCF film or something that doesn't need uh, processing or maybe germanium, germanium uh, kind of testers, uh, some sort of other configuration that may be a little bit better. Well, if that's all, uh, thanks a lot, guys. And let's uh, thank you all for